So as I have mentioned earlier, uh, I, uh, at least thanks to Joanna, I, I realized that I never have uploaded the materials. And I think from these materials, the 4.4 and the 4.5 are just the same, but I'm going to look at the one that I have, that I presented there, okay? So the idea that we could have is at least you watch first the video, and then the session that we have is some sort of a clarification, okay? So, sino ba sa inyo ang nakapanood na ng video ng 4.1? Iano nyo yung virtual hand nyo? <laughs> wala, wala ang isang nanood sa inyo? Yung po bang ano yun, yung intro po? Oo. Yung, uh, sa tingin nyo, intro lang yun, pero kasama na doon yung uh, absorbance or yung tinatawag nating uh, absorption. UBB's absorption spectrophotometry. Napanood ko po hanggang three-fourths po ng video. Ah, three-fourths lang ng video. Anyway, uh, if ever, so what we can do is we can just discuss some of the thing there. Okay? So, if you're going to look at the... So, mag-aano ako ng whiteboard. So if you're going to look at the topic there, so yung word na meron ka kayo doon, ay yung tinatawag natin. Spectroscopy. Okay? So when we when we uh, talking about spectroscopy, we could say it's just what? Uh, light matter interaction. So this is a general term uh, that refers to the science of the interactions of radiation with matter. So we are specifically looking at light, but we know light is just part of the so-called radiation. So yung tinatawag natin electromagnetic radiation. Okay? So, which means we're going to tackle about this concept known as light. But before we're going to look at that, usually, okay, we interchange the meaning of spectroscopy with spectrometry. Okay, spectroscopy and spectrometry or spectrometric. Tapos dito naman spectroscopic. So, madalas, okay, more often, we interchange the use of these two terms, but they're not really what we call the same. Okay, so, so when we're talking about spectroscopy, Okay, it, it usually we could say the interaction of interest uh, were between the electromagnetic radiation, which we narrow down to light, with matter. Okay, but right now, okay, we can broaden this to include uh, interaction between matter and other forms of energy. Yan yung spectroscopy. Okay? So, na-broaden na siya ngayon kasi meron na tayong tinatawag na acoustic waves, beams of articles such as ions and electrons. Okay? But, when we're talking about spectrometric, okay, or spectrometry, it refers to the measurement of the intensity of radiation with photoelectric transducer or other types of electronic device. So usually, the spectrometric method it encompasses a large group of analytical method based on uh, atomic and molecular spectroscopy. So we could say when, when we're talking about 
spectro, spectrometry or spectrometric methods, it compasses a large group of analytical method based on atomic and molecular spectroscopy. So parang yung spectrometry is the application of spectroscopy in analytical method. So tinitingnan natin yung interaction ng atom or molecules doon sa energy. And the way that we're going to do it, we find some quantitative relationship para yung spectroscopic uh, techniques na meron tayo, pwede nating i-quantify. So yan yung, we could say, main difference ng dalawang concept. Okay? So if we're going to look at the most widely uh, used spectro, uh, spectrometric method based on electromagnetic radiation, okay, we could look at it in terms of light and radiant heat. But this also includes the gamma rays, the X-ray, as well as the UV, the microwave and radio frequency radiation. Why? Okay, because remember, spectroscopy deals with what? Interaction of radiation and matter. Okay, so dyan pumapasok nun, tinatawag na electromagnetic radiation. Is this new to you? When we're talking about electromagnetic radiation, so to, to, to what we call uh, broaden yung materials na naka-record, I'm going to use some other slide. Okay? So ito yung advantage ninyo uh, attending this session, although it will be what we call uh, recorded, okay. But at least you have this interaction, okay. So if we're going to look at, yeah, ano ko lang yung meron akong slide na inano eh, pre, 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 pre. But that is different from the materials that we have because if you're going to look at the materials that we have, it doesn't even have my name <laughs> because I just use what. Uh, the UPLB people develop, okay? So what I'm going to share to you is just some additional uh, perspective doon sa concept no tinatawag natin spectroscopy, okay? So if we're going to look at this one here, so sabi ko nga, spectroscopy, a method of analysis based on the interaction, absorption, and production of light by matter. And they may also include the interaction of electrons, ions, and acoustics with matter. So when we're talking about like that's a type of an electromagnetic radiation. Now, how do we view light? I think this is what a, a gen chem concept. Have you heard the so-called dual nature of light? It is both or both. Particle and wave. Okay, so you know what we call the dual nature of light, wherein you have light is either a wave or a particle. Okay, so so you know the dual nature of light, nothing. Okay, so we we can get uh, like this that if we have an electromagnetic radiation, okay. We, uh, we can look at the general property. It can behave as a wave or it can behave as a particle, okay? So the wave model, usually, we can what? Describe it in terms of the wavelength, which is just the distance between two successive crests two successive throw, okay? As long as you have a distance, let's say from here to here, or from here to here, or let's say from here going here, okay? So in a wave model, okay, we look at 
one of the properties that it has is what we call the wavelength, the length between two successive crests, successive throw, or whatever, okay, uh, that you can have there as long as they're successive, the distance that they have. And if you're going to look at this wave model, we could say it is represented by a sinusoidal wave, okay? Uh, traveling in space with an oscillating electric field and perpendicular magnetic field. So I, I would say if you have a wave, your electromagnetic wave mo, meron kang dalawang field, okay? The electric field and the magnetic field. So the one that we use for most spectroscopic method is the, what we call the electric field. But if you're going to use the magnetic field, dyan pumapasok yung nuclear magnetic radiation, NMR. Okay? So, as I told you, one way to describe your wave is the wavelength. It's the distance from peak to peak. It could be the distance of the highest point, the lowest point, or any point, as long as it's excessive. Okay? And you can describe wavelength also in terms of wave number. So ano yung difference ng wavelength sa wave number? Wave number is just equals to what? Anyone? Reciprocal po ng wavelength. Okay. Wave number is just the reciprocal of wavelength. Okay. Because in most spectroscopic methods, you will see there a wavelength that let's say is nanometer and a cubic or not a cubic per centimeter. So you can at least identify that this is a wavelength and this is a wave number. Okay. Now, another way to describe your wave model, we could say, is the amplitude. So the amplitude is just the height of the electric vector. So meron kaya ganyan. Now, to, to, to show you uh, yung tinatawag nating electric field and the magnetic field, kaya tinatawag na electromagnetic radiation. So you can have, let's say, this one as your electric field and perpendicular to that is your magnetic field. Okay? Now, we can describe the wave model as this one. Do you see the animation? Yes. So the animation that we have here is what we call the number of cycles or oscillations. So another way to look at this is the frequency. So what's the relationship of wavelength with frequency? Genkem method, Genkem level pa to, ha? Ano yung relationship ng dalawa? Anyone? Inversely proportional po. Okay. They are inversely proportional. So pag shorter yung wavelength, mas, mataming pre mas mataas yung frequency. Pag longer yung wavelength, mas mababa yung frequency. Okay. And usually that's the, the common thing that they use to describe uh, a wave. Yung wavelength tsaka yung frequency. They seldom use amplitude. They seldom use this velocity of propagation. Because if you're going to look at the velocity of propagation, it's just the rate of travel through space dependent on the composition of medium. Okay? So usually, the maximum velocity that you have is the speed of light. And if you're going to look at the velocity of the propagation, in some, it's going to be slower in other media. It's like 0.03% slower in the air. So here, you could look at uh, the frequency here. So the air, the glass, and then the air. So as you're going to look at this, okay, they almost has the same one, frequency, 
Okay, 6.0 times 10 to the neg uh, to the 14. But if you're going to look at here, the wavelength that they have usually change depending on the media. They're the same in air, but if you pass through the glass, it's around what? Shorter wavelength. Okay. Now, this is, we could say, the wave property. Okay? So, nandiyan yung tinatawag nating uh, light as a wave. Now, what happens if we have the other one? Light as a particle. Okay? So, here, light is viewed as a discrete particles of energy called photons. And like other particles, light can be scattered, counted, or quantized. Okay? So if you're going to look at this, if you treat light as a particle, it, it, it's just like it has a certain amount. Okay? We could say it's not continuous, unlike the wave property of light. So here we could say that for a certain amount of energy, you can change okay, the what we call energy level. So the energy required for photon to give the transition is just the delta E equals to the energy level, the, the first energy level minus the initial energy level. And if you have energy of wave, or as a particle, you use this thing. This is just what? It, the concept that is introduced by Max Planck. The concept that come out of a black body radiation. Okay? So when you have, let's say, a particle, we could say, when the electromagnetic radiation is emitted or absorbed, okay? So here, if you're going to look at this, so if you have energy there, okay, uh, that comes to a particular system, your energy there is absorbed. So when you say it's emitted, maybe you can put an arrow down to say that it's emitted. But Whenever you have a particle, when the electromagnetic radiation is emitted or absorbed, there's a permanent transfer of energy from the emitting object or for the absorbing medium to occur. So there's a stream of, we could say, discrete particle. Okay, so we could say here, How do we relate this with this and this? Okay, so we could say E is equals to H times the frequency. And then we said earlier, okay, that there's an inverse relationship between this and this. And I'm not sure if it's given here, okay. So if you're going to look at this one, we could say that frequency is just equals to what? Is it like this? Because C is just equals to like this, right? Tama ba ho? Uh, ano po, C po ay wavelength times ano po, frequency. Or, or baliktad ako. <laughs> wavelength is equals to Tiga, meron ba dito ano? Ayun, nandun. So, that's a wave number. So, if we're going to look at this one, this is equals to like that, right? So B is equals to C over frequency because C is equals to, I think ito yung dapat na, ano, 
Am I right? Because what will happen yes. is I'm going to replace the frequency here. So frequency is just equals to C over the wavelength. So among yayari, then ito. Because we want to relate what's the relationship of energy with frequency or no wavelength. So we could say energy is proportional to frequency and wave number and inversely proportional to wavelength. So what does it mean? The longer the wavelength, the stronger the energy or the weaker the energy? Hello. Be careful. So the longer the wavelength, okay, the weaker the energy. Okay. The shorter the wavelength, okay, the stronger the energy. So I know ibig sabihin nito, which is hotter, yellow or blue? Pag naglaban yung dragon doon sa Game of Thrones, alin yung mananalo? Yung ice dragon o yung uh, normal dragon? Yung may blue na apoy po. Okay? Yung blue na apoy. I don't know if you're familiar with Games of Thrones. Familiar ba kayo doon? I'm trying to find the meme. Yung, yung, yung car, mas mahaba pag nasa red region, tapos mas maiksi sa blue region. Okay? So in, in the Game of Thrones, the, 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 there were three dragons, and then one of the dragons, I think in season six or season seven, was captured by the White Walkers and turned into a blue dragon. And in one of the episodes, they fought together. So one emitting yellow flame compared to what we call the blue flame. Okay. So we could say in the Roy G. Bib, right? So maybe you now have the scientific basis why you don't look straight to the sun. Why? What does the sun has? Anong color you meron yung sun? Maybe this one will be more helpful. So ito yung electromagnetic radiation. Na yung light na sinasabi natin, napaka-iksi lang niya. Ito lang siya, oh. So alin dito ang uh, more energetic? Is it this side or this side? Remember what you have, Roy, G. You buy the book. Roy G. Bib, right? Kaya yung, 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 yung further dito, yun yung tinatawag natin ultra violet. You still remember the meaning of ultra? In your analytical? Ultra is what? On the far side of something. Di ba meron kaya tayong tinatawag na ultra analysis? Are you familiar with that? Kailan tayo gumagawa ng ultra analysis? You still remember that semi-analysis, macro-analysis, and then meron tayong ultra-analysis. So when you say ultra, it's just to the far side of something. Okay? Now, as I've told you, 
ito yung electromagnetic radiation. And there are other, what we call radiation there. It's just happened that we look at this one because that's the one that allow us to see the different colors, okay? But if you're going to look at this, you can use the complete electromagnetic radiation. And you have some other spectroscopic method there. So ito yung radio, your microwave, your infrared, the IR, and then you have the visible and then the UV. So meron kayong makikita dito yung UV piece. So ito yung ibig sabihin nun. Ultraviolet, tapos yung this is visible. And then you have the so-called X-ray and then you have the gamma rays. So as you're going to look at this, this is the high energetic. And this is also has the high frequency. How did I know? See, it's shorter. So mas maraming frequency. And if you're going to look at this in terms of scale, they go in the atomic level. Now, what are these different spectroscopic methods based on the electromagnetic radiation? You have the gamma ray emission. And the type of quantum transition that you have there is nuclear. So we could say that's the most energetic because that's the shortest wavelength. And then you have the X-ray absorption, emission, fluorescence, and diffraction. So I'm trying to video myself with this X-ray uh, gun, okay? And we try to analyze metal next week in our lab. So the one that you look at this, the type of transition is the inner electron. And then you have the vacuum ultraviolet. But the one that we're going to focus more is this. Because this is within the UV visible region. And you look at the electron bonding. So you will learn, I think in 4.1, you have there the UVBs. And we're talking about the absorption phenomena. So usually light absorb matter. The intense the color is the more it's absorbed. And then we're going to talk about IR and Raman. This is the vibrational thing. Sino sa inyo may 140? Anyone taking 140? Na nakuha na or kumukuha pa lang? This sem pa lang po. Kakatapos pa lang po namin sa UV. It's a UV. So that means you, you, you look at this, what we call chromophores. Right? Yes. Die-ins and enones. Yeah. Mga. Kasi usually, huwagin na sabihin kay Ma'am Gladys. Uh, I left the IR and the Raman usually sa, 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 ano, sa, sa 140. Wherein you have this IR spectra you're going to deduce what's the functional group that are present, okay? Kasi yun yung parang interpretation ng spectrum na meron ka, anong functional group na meron ka. It looks at the so-called rotation. Kaya tawag ko dyan is vibrational molecules, vibrational spectroscopy, okay? And I always use at the sample here in vibrational spectroscopy, yung water. Right? And uh, maybe I, I can show this to you. Example lang yung. I need to open something. Okay. I have some software here that I, I want to at least share to you. Maaring wala tayong software na ganyan. So I have to stop the sharing here. So, I'm just trying to go to I 
hope I can play the thing. I, I know it's not there, but I, I want to share uh, that software with you. Desktop. And then I went to. Then who was to be sharing? So I will just go with this one. So I'm trying to find the software. Goshen, Goshen, where is Goshen? So I just have to stop sharing this one. And that's a new one. Discard. I have a software here that I want to share with you. Sana hindi ko na bura yung water. Where is this one? Ghost view. Close. Close the file. Oh no. Bura ko ang water. Yeah, I think I, I uh, maybe next time when we do the IR, because what the, the software do is it's model and it's going to predict the IR spectra. And once you see the peak, you can determine what's the functional group that caused them. So usually for water, let's say this is the oxygen and this is the two hydrogen and all you need to do. Ano tawag dito sa mga nagwa 140? Ano tawag dito? Dumating na ba kayo doon? What do you call this? Symmetrical stretching and then asymmetrical and then meron pa kayong ganyan o di kaya o di kaya I don't know if you have uh, what we call reach that portion. Okay. So usually tinatakil yan doon. So as you could see, there's a lot of usefulness in this method. Okay. Now, my question to you have you heard this term before? Narinig nyo na ba yung mga term na to? For first time, you lang siya narinig. Because our, our, our what we call topic will be mostly here and here. So we go on absorption. emission and then vibration just a vibration and genuine scattering so these are what we call major classes of spectrochemical methods okay and i'm trying to jump To, to, to some of the things here. So here, if you're going to look at this, if we have the spectrometric method, it's just a general term for the science that deals with the interaction of various types of electromagnetic radiation. So if you're going to look at this one, you have a sample, so there's the light coming in, and then you measure the light. That is what we call absorbed. 
So usually, okay, this is what? Transmission, okay? So you transmit the light here and then the, the light that's transmitted out. So any light that was what we call absorbed by the sample can be used for analysis. So, so, so you know what we call technique na ginagamit natin dito. So if you're going to look at these methods that you have, so meron tayo dito ito, itong tatlo na, itong area na to dito. Dito, hindi siya magano eh. So those are the, the, the different methods. And if you're going to look at the type of the quantum transition, so it has something to do with the electrons. Okay. Now, what can happen when the electromagnetic radiation interact with matter? You can have diffraction, you can have transmission, you can have refraction, reflection, scattering, but when it is absorption, this is what? A quantized event. Okay? So ito yung pwede mong gamitin for analysis. And just to give you a brief of some of this interaction that happens between electromagnetic radiation and sample, I have some here. So maybe you're familiar with refraction, right? Usually when you have a refraction, this is just a change in the direction in the travel of a light beam when it comes at an angle to a boundary or interface between two transparent media with different density like this one. You think that pencil what is bent between the water and the air interface. Why? Because there's a refraction of light. So if you're going to look at the refraction of light here, so you have here, okay, if you have a glass, so that the refraction is around here, but if you have water, there's a different, uh, what we call uh, angle of refraction here. So the difference that you have here, you could see, oh, they're bending. But what happened there is really a refraction. Okay, and for every material, there's what we call the refraction index. depending on the medium uh, over the substance specific, okay? So you could say that the values of your refractive index are dependent of the wavelength and it's useful for you to de uh, in designing the so-called prism, okay? And the one that they follow in this process of diffraction is what we call Snell's law. Change in the direction is given by the Snell's law. So what, what does this mean? Refractive index sine sine theta one, second refractive index sine theta two. So if both of them are the same, there's no change in direction. So that means voila, refraction. Now the bigger the difference between the two, the more uh, refraction that occurs. Okay. Now when the light comes in a right angle, giving you uh, theta that is equals to zero, there's no refraction. Now the other one is what? Reflection, okay? So if you're going to look at the reflection here, that's when the radiation crosses an interface between media that differ in refractive index, some or all of the tra light travels back to the medium, ito. So pag meron kang incident light dito tapos nag-bounce back, reflection yun. Kapag nag-pass through dun, that's your refraction. When do you see reflection? Okay. Kailan ka makaka-observe uh, no, ng reflection? Whenever there's refraction, most likely there's also reflection. And it happens when there's bigger difference in your refractive index. Now, if it occurs at all angles, at 90 degree angles uh, to the boundary 
uh, normal, the fraction reflected is given by this one. The intensity of the light or the light that was uh, refracted, as it says here, is with the ratio to the incident light, the higher it is, okay, it approaches one at large angle, and that becomes the basis of your fiber optics. And then this one, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this one. Light can be diffracted. So this is the bending of a parallel light, of a parallel beam of light or other electromagnetic radiation as it passes through a sharp barrier through a small opening. So meron kang light dito, tapos may barrier, so magkakaroon ng diffraction. Okay? And we could say one end result of this diffraction is yung tinatawag natin interference. The diffraction that is a consequence of interference. So I'm not sure if you heard the constructive and the destructive interference. One is what? Additive. And the other one would be some sort of a cancellation. So if you have a constructive interference when two light waves of the same wavelength combine exactly in phase, their amplitude add to a larger or brighter intensity. But if you have destructive, which is wave out of phase, when you combine them, what happened? They just cancel out. Okay. So you can have destructive interference when two waves from the same source travel different paths to get to a point. And the difference in the phase, okay, the, it can really cause a difference in the phase between the two waves. But we're not going to talk about this one here, okay? So we can also have the so-called more than one slit or the uh, uh, as performed by Thomas Young double slit experiment. So meron tayong tinatawag na interference pattern. One example of this would be the rainbow. And you can look also in this in terms of this one. I don't know, do you see the animation? Where there's a change in the slit distance and then the change in the frequency. So you could see that there's some changes. So this is Thomas Young. Uh, double slip experiment. So maybe we can end the session here. Let's try to solve this. What is the wavelength of a photon that has three times as much energy as that of the photon whose wavelength is 779? Taking up. So anong starting point natin dito? Anyone? Pa rin po. Ha? Nasa siyang slide pa rin po. Ah, teka. Uh, isang slide pa pa ako. Sorry. Hindi ko pala napalitan. Sorry. Kaya sinabihan niyo ako. <laughs> Dito. I wasn't able to show you this slide. If that's the case. <laughs> Yung refraction, refraction index, Snell's law. But I think this is not really part of the lecture that we have. Reflection, tapos diffraction. And then your interference. So, parang additional info lang to. But the basic materials ay yun nandoon sa recording. So, how do we solve this? Ano starting point natin? So, we can have this one, right? So, ano yung relationship ng energy sa 
wavelength they inverse are proportional. inverse po. inversely proportional so we could say e1 over e2 is equals to lambda 2 over lambda 1 that makes sense tama ba and then we could say e1 and e2 is equals to what three times e1 right and we could say we don't know this but this is equals to make sense Tama ba? Yes, so when we rearrange themselves ano yung hinahanap natin yung so if we're going to do this e1 over 3e1 so we just cancel that thing so lambda 2 is equal to 779 so rearranging themselves uh, lambda 2 times 3 equals to 779. And to get lambda 2, it's just 779 divided by 3. And that is equals to what? 259.7. 259.7, which is equals to 260. Tá não. Tá me tá não caiu. So I'm going to get your attendance. Kasi gagawin ko siguro pantagdag bonus point doon sa score nyo. But I want from start to finish nandito kayo. Maybe the recording is the one that will be my basis. Okay. Oh shoot. Sana hindi ko sinabi. <laughs> no, I think uh, as uh, what we call incentive for you coming here. Because tatanggalin ko na yung record or I post. Metanong. Okay, mahiya. Concerned then so far po. Bayad ako ng LB, UPFB para mag-ganito. Okay? Do you have any problem with our course so far with the setup? Okay lang ba sa inyo ganito? For Mr. Okay na po yung ganito. How about the others? Same rin po. Okay naman. Same din po. Hmm? Sigurado kayo? <laughs> this I'm trying to adjust. Okay? Although this is my second time teaching the 137 course. 